Hey there, welcome back. I'm Amanda. This is the Happy Homestead. Literally, I'm on our homestead property today. And today's video is just gonna be a little bit different. So um, it's a Monday and it's not Memorial Day, That the day I'm filming this. It's just a regular old Monday. And I have off from work. <laughs> so excited and thankful um, our company gave us the day off today so I am using my day and doing some fun things and things that need to be done so I thought rather than kind of like showing you kind of one or two things right about what we do or what I'm doing in the kitchen or in the garden I'm just gonna take you along today in the day kind of show you some general things that I do on a regular basis to help um, feed my soul, feed my family, and take care of all of the responsibilities we have. So we are gonna water the garden, we're gonna take a look at the bees, and we're gonna go home and get some cooking done. Um, we've got a big dinner tonight that I'm excited for, so I'm gonna take you along for all of it. I only have 12 gallons with me until I can get more of these jugs. 12 gallons is the max that I'm able to do right now. So I try to ration <laughs> the water out as much as I can. I will say that so far everything looks really healthy. Whenever I come into garden, the first thing I do is really just kind of walk around and look at everything. You know, what looks stressed, what looks thirsty, what looks healthy. Do I see any signs of pests and bugs or animals? The more time you spend in your garden, the more you're able to decipher what's maybe not looking right. I try to get out here about two times a week. Um, I'd love for it to be more, but two times is all I can handle at the moment. And, uh, but it gives me a good gauge. Like I can already see just watering these squash. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a leaf right here that has been definitely chewed up and I see a couple more. So overall the plant still looks very healthy. I just need to keep an eye on that. I actually just also noticed on my comfrey Can you see that? Look at that. We've got one, two, three. Three stems here, or no, four. Four where the leaves were eaten away. What did that? <laughs> What's in here? I have the electric fence around. I did find a snake the other day, uh, but a snake didn't do that. So yeah. I don't know if that was a bug or a little mammal. That's why you gotta keep checking your gardens. There is a little water in my wagon here. So I am gonna actually dump that on my peas. down to my last five gallons. And let me tell you, if you ever want to realize how valuable water is, try hauling it for a couple of years and you will value every drop you get and have more of appreciation for it even in your own home. All in all, everything is 
watered. I could use a little more water for sure. I think I'm gonna have to go get some jugs this week, um, just so I can start bringing more out. I remember I watched um, Ben and Meg Holler. It was earlier this year, it was when they were planting. And I remember Ben had said he had a premonition, if that's the right word, a feeling, that this year would be a dry year. I think I'm feeling that too. I mean, we're only in May, middle to end of May here, but it is 72 degrees. The high today is gonna to be 81, and we're not supposed to have rain for another like seven to nine days. I just have a feeling we're gonna have a very dry season, so I need to be prepared um, and get more water jugs so I can haul more water out here. But I'm satisfied with how things look. I do have, um, so all of these pots are my bush beans right here. And they're supposed to be two plants per pot. So, you know, obviously one didn't germinate there, none germinated there. We're missing one, missing one, missing one, right? So I do need to get some more bush bean seeds planted. And I actually wanna do a whole row in the ground of bush beans. Um, to succession plant from those. So if I get all those done, that's 20 plants. I want a succession row, on, or a succession plant, another row of 20 plants. And then in a, three or four weeks, I'll do another row of 20 plants in here and some of these open spaces because green beans have been the one thing that we have found over the last, say 10 months. Um, total easy winner for preserving and for just quick and easy meals. Uh, so I want to get a lot more green beans in here. I also planted some sunflowers the other day when I was out here. Last year I had like the really giant sunflowers along these poles and I did the same thing this year. So I've already planted those seeds and then I threw out some un other sunflower seeds throughout the garden in some dead spaces. But again, with how dry it's been, I just don't know if we're gonna have much luck there. I may have to plant more sunflower seeds uh, once we start seeing a lot more rain coming in the forecast. Okay, I'm gonna take all of this stuff back. I'm gonna suit up and we're gonna go check the bees. So what I'm hoping to see is I'm gonna open the top of every hive, all three hives, and it's just a super on and I don't think there's anything on top of the super. It's just the lid and then the super. So I expect bees to <laughs> be on me. Um, but what I'm hoping to see is I'm going to lift a couple of frames up and I want to see cap honey. I want to see those frames being built out and I want to see like 80 to 90% 90, 90 of it built out, um, which means that I have two options if, if I see that. If I see that, option one is um, put another super on. And honestly, why did this go up? I don't know if I have another super. I mean, three more, right? right? I don't think I have three more. I have to look and I don't really feel like buying any right now. I want to make sure the bees don't get in these little pockets. I have to be sure. There. Now the zipper's all the way up. Now they can't get in. Okay. Um, so option one is get more supers and put more supers on, but not really feeling that option right now. Um, option two is to actually take the supers off, harvest the honey and then put them back on, right, within like a day. Like quickly harvest, put them back on. Um, and what that does is it allows them to then clean up their frames again and start over. Uh, I did that last year, but I don't know that I did it soon enough. And so that's the other option. And then if I don't see enough of capped honey, I just leave it and hopefully give them more time.
Oh no, bad news, bad news. These frames are not filled out. Oh my goodness. Well, I don't want to agitate them too much, but let me show you. Oh, they're already coming out. Here, let me just move the camera. Can you see how there's no comb built on the foundation and no capped honey? So that is not good. But I need to close this puppy up. I don't really know what to think of that. Oh, this one looks better. Oh, this one looks a lot better. I see capped honey in there. Do you see how it's bulging from the sides? I would say they're about 40 to 50 percent. So this down here, this is the foundation, and then you can see they started to build the comb out, but it's empty. I mean, they're still kind of building it out, but it's empty. There's no honey in there. Well, to say that's disappointing is an understatement. The middle hive looks pretty good. I would say the middle hive looks to be um, maybe somewhat on track with where they should be. They look the healthiest. Um, certainly honey being drawn out into those combs. All right, any bees on me? Can I take my suit off and not get stung? The other thing I do is just listen. I don't hear any. Okay, um, first hive, eh, nothing even drawn out. Last hive, third hive, there were some comb drawn out, just not filled. Uh, so yeah, varying degrees of completeness here. And guys, I am not an expert beekeeper. I am a novice, um, even though we've been doing it for how old's my son? My son's gonna be nine. I would say we've been doing it for eight or nine years. Um, still a novice. All right, I'm gonna get everything off, put away, sweating. And we're gonna go home and do some things at home. Home, got in the house, and uh, yeah, I got some things to do in the kitchen. I was just walking over to check. I was doing an experiment um, to see if I could make my own sour cream. And this has been sitting on the counter. I put some starter culture in it, just heavy cream, raw heavy cream, starter culture. And it's been sitting for about three to four days. It doesn't smell bad. I don't know that my family will eat it. <laughs> I think it tastes kind of good. I'll go put that in the fridge and then let you know what we got going on today. All right, so I mentioned that we're having um, a rather big dinner tonight. Um, it is May, middle to end May, and it's been six months since our last Thanksgiving, last November, and it's about six months until Thanksgiving 2023. So. I've been doing this for the last few years. My family and I love it. And today we are celebrating half year or mid-year Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're having a 
Thanksgiving dinner tonight. I actually had an 18 pound turkey in the freezer that I had purchased from our local farmer last fall. And I never got to cook it um, because for Thanksgiving, we usually go to family's house and I just didn't get to cook it. Um, or maybe I cooked a smaller one, I can't remember. So I had this 18 pound one that I had purchased six months ago and uh, it's big and it was big in the freezer and I'm gonna get a new one this year anyway. So I thought, let's, let's do Thanksgiving. And so I have the 18 pound turkey right there. It's in my huge eight gallon cheese pot. And um, it's been in there for probably about 36 hours. So we're gonna take it out, clean it up, and get it in the roasting pan. And I'm just gonna start roasting a turkey uh, for tonight's dinner. And then yesterday I took all of our sourdough, oh, let me get it for you. I took all of the sourdough bread we had. I had about one and a half loaves um, that were just a few days old. And I decided to make some stuffing. So I did this yesterday, and then I just put some herbed butter on top that'll kind of bake through. It's stovetop stuffing. Y'all, stovetop stuffing was my thing um, when I was younger and even a young adult. I couldn't get enough of that junk. <laughs> I say junk because it is junk. And so I last year, and I think even the year before, and definitely this time, I've been trying to recreate it. So this is homemade sourdough bread, um, two quarts of home canned chicken stock, dehyd or excuse me, freeze dried celery, freeze dried onions, a lot of sage, oregano, garlic powder. It might be oh salt and pepper, and then I just kind of let the bread sit in the stock overnight, and then I've got this herb butter that'll melt in within the oven. So this is gonna be amazing. And then this one is gonna be green bean casserole. I'm so excited for this too. So this is two quarts of home canned green beans, two small cans of organic sliced mushrooms, and then I made a um, home version of cream of mushroom soup. What was also so amazing about this dinner for tonight is that I didn't have to go buy anything. Can you imagine cooking a Thanksgiving dinner and not having to go buy anything to get all of your sides and meal made? To me, that is like the best feeling. So I made the home version of the cream of mushroom soup and I used Ruth Ann Zimmerman's recipe. You basically make a roux with the butter and flour um, and you saute some mushrooms or celery, right? If you're doing a cream of celery soup, cream of mushroom soup, um, saute that in with it, with the roux. And then you alternate adding like chicken stock and then milk or cream until you get the desired amount that you need. And it came out wonderful. So I used no store-bought products for this. Oh, that's not true. The mushrooms, except I got them from Azure. And so the next thing I got to do today is I'm going to try to make the French fried onions. Obviously we're not buying and using those. So I'm gonna slice up some onions and try to like fry them up and bread them a little bit and top my casserole with that. So we've got stuffing, green, green bean casserole, the turkey. I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes in the Instant Pot a little bit later. And then yesterday my daughter and I made pumpkin pie ice cream. I had some last night. I can say this out loud because my family's not home. <laughs> it was so good. I had some. We used um, pumpkin puree from pumpkins that we had last year and I had froze the puree. So we had um, some homemade pumpkin puree and cream and I did not put sugar and instead I put a little bit of maple syrup in and I think that really made a difference. It was very subtle. The sweetness is not overpowering. I added pumpkin pie spice, um, a little vanilla extract. Oh, and I had some homemade cream cheese that was left in the refrigerator from about a week ago. 
and it only lasts like maybe up to two weeks in the fridge and so I actually added some of the cream cheese chunks in which was basically uh, cream that was then cultured and then strained to make it the cream cheese so it's like a pumpkin pie cream cheese ice cream and it is so great I can't wait to serve that for dessert tonight so no pie just the ice cream and then we have canned beets and I have some frozen corn so if we want to do that too we can so yes it is mid-year Thanksgiving and uh, just a great day to have off from work and to be able to do this and have fun all right so I gotta get the turkey going Okay, so because this is so big and I was brining it, it did not fit in our refrigerator. So what I did was like I had one of those oven bags um, and I put the turkey in the bag with the brine. And then I have just been periodically adding ice. I actually had to go buy a 16 pound bag of ice yesterday just so that we could keep this really cold for the last 36 hours. So I'm just gonna drain some of this water and ice off. I'm hoping, I got the neck in here too. I'm hoping that my bird fits fits in my pan. my butter a little bit I am just gonna throw in minced dried onion garlic powder thyme dried rubbed sage and then this is leek powder these are from the dried tops of the leeks I'm just gonna start rubbing olive oil on because um, I don't know that I'll have enough butter mixture. And I know that the olive oil will help get that skin beautifully crispy and brown. Last thing is pepper. I'm just gonna do it all over. All right, and Redmond real salt, of course. There is no other. I've set my smoke alarm off twice and subsequently the security, we have a security system that's tied into our smoke alarm and they have been reaching out. Is everything okay? I do this a lot. I thought my oven was pretty clean, but when I opened it to check the turkey, just to take a look at the skin, this wall of smoke comes up. I was like, oh no. So I quickly open the back door, like run to open the back door, run to turn the ceiling fan on in the living room. And it went off. Oh, actually, before it went off, I should preface, before I did any of that, the smoke alarm downstairs started chirping. So I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta change the battery. <laughs> I gotta change the battery. <laughs> and then the smoke alarm went off. And then... I got it under control in here. I got it turned off. I secured the security company, let them know we're not 
we're not in need of a fire truck. Everything's okay. And now I'm like, okay, I gotta change the battery. And the step stool that we have that we need, I'm just gonna start cutting onions while I'm talking here. I can't find it. I have looked in the garage, I have looked in the house, and I have looked under the house in our crawl space. I can't find it. Don't know where it is. Um, so then I find a much smaller step stool and I'm literally like four inches too short from reaching the smoke alarm to change the battery. So now I'm walking around the house trying to figure out, like in my mind, I'm like, I gotta change this battery and I do not want my turkey skin to burn. Like those are the two things that are running through my mind. So I am literally going through the house to see like, what can I put on the step stool to step on safely and get this battery changed. But I'm also thinking I should just lower the temperature. Just get the thermometer in the turkey, put the foil tent on and lower the temperature. And then I don't have to really open it again for a while, right? So I decide to do that first, um, rather than Jerry rig my step stool. And wouldn't you know it, the smoke alarm went off again. <laughs> Poor Marley, look at him right now. Oops. <sighs> he is wore out from all of the activity. Oh my goodness. But I got the temperature, like the thermometer in, and I have like a remote thermometer over here on the counter. So I put it deep into the breast. It's at 64 degrees right now. We're trying to get to, you know, between 170, 175, and eventually rest up to 180. Uh, and then I'll have to double check that actually. I don't know if I rest at 165 and then it gets to 180, I'll have to look. But uh, once I got that secured, then I was like, okay, I have some really big cookbooks. <laughs> really thick cookbooks. And so I got one and stood on it and um, I was able to twist it down, but I still, oh my gosh, it was, well, I don't, actually, I don't think I was able to twist it down. I still was just a couple inches short. So I went and got one more big cookbook and then successfully changed the battery. But I left the step stool and the cookbooks over there just in case it was a bad battery and I would need to get up there again. So, the camera was not on, be thankful. Uh, everything is seemingly under control and I am gonna start making my French fried onions. So I'm just frying up my onions. I'm frying them in home rendered lard. We don't use seed oils in this house and um, a lot of those ancestral fats have a lot of nutrients for us. And that's the first batch. I think I'm gonna have about three batches. And I just tried one. Mm. I'm not exaggerating when I say they taste extremely close to the French's brand fried onions. By the way, I have my fan on because I am not having my smoke alarm go off again. <laughs> so that's what you hear. But that taste is so close. All I did was all purpose flour, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and a little minced onion and frying it up in the, the lard. I did soak them. You saw me put some milk in the bowl soaked them in milk for five, 10 minutes. Mm. 
with food under control, I just need to clean up the kitchen. I need to get the table picked up and maybe set the table nice for our Thanksgiving dinner, clean the kitchen, vacuum, and um, maybe take a little rest and read a book before I go pick the kids up from school. Okay, it's been a few hours or a couple of hours since I filmed. I got the kitchen cleaned. I got the table set. I'll show it to you in a minute. It looks so pretty. Um, the casseroles are in the oven. The turkey is right here. I'm gonna show that to you as well. It ended up cooking for three hours, so a little bit less than I thought it would, but I checked with my probe thermometer to make sure that I wasn't uh, misjudging anything and it's fully cooked. So it's been resting for about an hour. The potatoes are going in the Instant Pot, so I still have to mash those. And then I took some of the fat from the, the turkey pan here and put that in a saucepan so I can make a roux to make the gravy. Let me show you the turkey. Dun, dun, dun! Does that not look gorgeous? That is gorgeous. I am so excited to eat that. And the table is set. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving in May. <laughs> I would rather do this in May than in November every year. Hey. Yes, no, June 15th. <laughs> well, dinner is served on the table. We are going to go enjoy our half year Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoyed joining me today. If you liked this type of video, please comment below and that way I'll know to, to bring more in the future. Stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye.